Hey guys, here's a video on how to do basic visualization in SOLIDWORKS. So your first part, you're going to want to import whatever your model is. So your guys is going to be a car shell. I'm going to do something a little bit different based on kind of just what models I have. So mine is actually going to be a truck. So you just go, you can either open it up or you can just kind of drag the file into the window. Just open up your step file. It's going to import all your different parts into a step file. Now, if you exported it as an assembly, it's going to come in as an assembly, which is, which is quite nice. Now, by default, it might apply some textures uh, kind of based on whatever you have. Uh, for to make things easier, I'll just kind of leave thing, leave these in here. Now, if you want to edit the textures, you kind of just open up your part. It's easier to do textures in the part level than it is at the assembly level. And you can go to this task pane over here, go to the Appearances, Scenes, and Decals button, and here you can apply any number of materials. So for this, we have a few different materials already applied to the part. We're going to want to have our truck with uh, some paint on it, some car paint. When, now, when you do paint in SOLIDWORKS, it's going to come in as a glossy plastic with little paint speckles in it. But these paint speckles are scaled to the size of your part. So if your part is realistically sized or anything larger than just a few inches, it'll look fine. But if your part's really small in that some of you model really small scale, it's going to look kind of weird and very noisy. But for our truck, our truck is 97 inches wide, so we're fine. So let's apply some paint. So if you apply it, it allows us to apply it to just this little set right there. So there we go. Otherwise, you may have to do it by face, which kind of just makes things a little bit more difficult. But since ours is kind of already divvied up, we don't really have to do that. So we have a few more things here. Probably want some of this. Uh, can you leave that as black or make it chrome? Let's uh, make these guys chrome. So metal, chrome, chromium plate. So we're going to have to do it by face. We're going to have to go in and select all the faces that we want to want to make this texture. Takes a little time, and I guarantee you I'm going to miss some. Because I'm trying to go through this really quickly. Okay, so now we have a lot of the basic things, the material we want. Uh, like I said, I probably missed a few faces, but that's okay. If we really won't, we can go back in and correct them later, otherwise we'll just leave it as is. Now, if we want, this does have setups for, for wheels. Now, it does have tire tread texture. And if you want, you can put it on there. Personally, I don't think it looks too grand. But in the interest of time, we'll just throw it on here. Now this one, because it's individually mapped, you you don't really want to go in and try to apply it to a bunch of different faces. It'll end up looking weird. But for the normal rubber, we can absolutely do that. We can kind of just go in from that rubber and apply it to a bunch of different faces. So that doesn't quite map the same way. So there we go. So now we have wheels, we have we have our we have our wheels, we have our paint, we have our chrome. 
I can see I missed quite a few spots. That's better. So now we have all of our textures kind of where we want them, but we want to apply some, some decals because a truck, well, first of all, it's never this clean. And two, uh, it just kind of makes it feel more realistic. So let's go down to, to scenes, or rather, to decals, logos. Let's drag a decal on here. Now right now, it's only applied to this face. But let's say we want to apply it to a bunch of these faces. What's this face, this face, this face, this face? A bunch of them. You can choose which faces it's going to go to, which is pretty nice. So let's keep this decal relatively small. I'm not even sure what we're going to put on here. Now it's going to project it flatly onto whatever we have it set to. So let's pick an image. Let's browse. Let's give it a, a tribal graphic. I, I don't know why, but let's do something like that. So now we could have gone into Photoshop and edit out that, that white surrounding it. We can try and do a selective color mask, where we just kind of pick the color that we want out there, but as you can see, that doesn't really work very well. I've already had gone in, and I have a separate image mask for me that I can go and select. And you can see it cut out the little emblem. So let's drag it to where we want it. Drag it to the size we want. I don't know why you'd have this on your truck. But whatever. Looks kind of cool. Sure. And there we have it. A little tribal logo on the side of the truck. Now if we want to edit this decal can very easily go into decals, double click on our tribal. So for this, I actually want it to map to some additional faces. So this face and that face. There we go. Okay. But now let's say on the front we want to apply some dirt. So let's actually save this let's apply some dirt. So let's throw a decal on this front face. Let's add some of these other faces in uh, front of the grill. It's just whole front. Except the logo. You don't want that on there. Or maybe the headlights. I don't know. We haven't applied textures to the headlights, so there's nothing really there right now anyway. So let's apply some dirt. This, I already have some pre-made pre dirt maps. Uh, but if you guys, you just kind of Google dirt, get a picture of dirt. And then set your, uh, your alpha channel to some kind of dirt map. There we go. Get some a little bit of dirt on the front of this cab. Not too, too much. It's not terribly dirty. Looks kind of silly that it ends rather abruptly, but that's okay for right now. Alright, so there's our cab. Let's go back up to our, uh, our truck level. Let's start editing our trailer. 
So this, we can throw huge decals on it. Something big, like a big company logo if we really wanted to. So let's do uh, metal, or rather paint. Let's kind of get the same paint. Car, our same orange that we have on the front of the truck. And now we can throw some kind of decal on here. So let's throw a decal. I don't know what it's going to be. Probably something pretty big. Mapping. It's probably going to be easier to map to the body. It's fine if it's on both sides, where you'd only see one time, one side at a time. The fact that it's going to be mirrored isn't really a huge, huge issue. Let's do this as a big decal. We want some kind of uh, some kind of logo, something you'd you'd want to put on the side of a truck. So let's use a large BYU logo. I didn't cut it out as cleanly as I could, but for what we're doing right now, we're fine. So... Now let's say we want to apply an orbiting camera. Orbiting camera, and we want to change our scene a little bit. So our scene, we can go in, we can edit our scene, we can change where the floor is. The floor is just going to be right here, wherever this is set to. You can change your background color, how it works. Anything you want to do. Uh, we should have had it set to factory floor, so we should be good. So let's create some kind of camera that moves all around. So to do that, we're going to need to create a plane, a plane that we can create the camera path on. Now this camera path can move whatever we want, uh, but for the interest of looping and for the interest of time, it's probably good to do it as a circle. It certainly doesn't have to be, but you just may make a. So let's make this 120 feet, or 120 inches. Still not high enough, 10 feet. So let's make this size 20 feet. So now we're way above this truck. Might even want to go a little bit higher. But that's okay. Let's do a sketch on this plane. Let's do, uh, because we, we have a truck rather than... Uh, is really long rather than something that's kind of skinnier. We might want to do like some kind of ellipse. Should operate just the same as a circle, but uh, not as wide in the areas where we don't want it to be. Alright, so there we have it. So now, create a camera. We go to our scene level, add camera. Position is along this path. And here we can drag it, and it'll go around our truck. A little bit too close, but that's okay. We can edit our path later. We make our roll zero. Okay, now let's make our camera, change the lens of our camera. Let's do something a little, that's a little bit further out so we can see more of this truck. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit nicer. Let's edit this uh, 
sketch, though. Maybe we should move this uh, where it's out of, at least. A little bit further towards the front of the truck. Okay. So now, if we want to control this camera, we're going to need to do a motion study. So let's create this little tab right here. There's already one defaulted there for you. Right-click orientation. Set your view orientation to this camera that you just created. Now you're going to do this through the creation of what's called keys. And that is where you set what you want it to be, whatever it is, the position, the rotation, the setting, at a certain time. And then the, and then the system will calculate all the individual frames between it. Which makes your life a lot easier. So let's go to about 10 seconds. Let's edit this camera. And let's change its position from 100 to 1. So now, that camera is going to go from there to there. So now we can save our little video. It can do it based on where the SolidWorks screen is. And that'll just render whatever this this view that we see right here. Or we can change this to the photo view settings. And that'll render <coughs> at whatever your render settings are. But we haven't really gone into our Reddit render settings too much. So let's take a look at what we have. So render tools, options. Here we can designate our resolution. Here we can designate our render quality. If we want to do bloom, which is kind of those bright light reflections. Uh, we have contour rendering, which will do that kind of wireframe view. And then caustics, which involves light through glass. But it's not usually something you have to worry about too much. So let's just take a look at what this looks like rendered. So there's our preview window, and that's going to open up our final render window. So there's our truck, quite shiny. A little bit dirty in the front. Uh, probably could be a little bit dirtier, but that's fine. Could use some more decals, but we're, we're pretty happy with it right now. So there we have it. If we want, there's, this is where you save your video. You can save it whatever format you want. You are going to have to change the resolution in here. It's not going to respect your photo view settings for resolution. So if you want to do a rendered video, you're going to have to change those settings in there. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me.